I'm Mark Lull, and I am primary technical support for Traverse PC, and I'd like to welcome you all to this web seminar. Thank you for joining me. We'll be taking a look at uh, the new uh, things that are available to you in TPC Desktop 2018 R1, and we're going to start by looking at phrase-driven legal descriptions. We're uh, looking at a project we did here a few years ago. This was a boundary line adjustment that we did um, down in the uh, Buckskin Bob's Camp area uh, south of Florence, and so uh, we're going to take a look at how you can uh, customize your legal descriptions with our new tools. So let's just zoom in on the north area of this uh, project, and we'll just take a look at lot one here. Uh, if I uh, go in and edit this Traverse, I can go to Tools, Legal Description Report, and you'll notice that this is an entirely new dialog box from what we had before. Um, Phrase-driven uh, legal descriptions are going to allow you to customize the various phrases that are used throughout your legal description reports. So we're giving you a lot of flexibility here, a lot of customization here. You will be, as always in Traverse PC, you'll be able to save and store your settings for this. So you will be able to create these templates or styles that you'll store uh, for various uh, jurisdictions that you work in or for various types of legal descriptions that you use. Uh, once again, you want to uh, create it once and use it many, many times. The phrases let you customize the, the various things that will go in to your legal description, and you can edit them right in here. You can put in, add these placeholders that will pull in various data into your, uh, um, into your legal description. Let's start by looking at the settings. The settings are the same things you've had before, uh, except that there's a, a lot more power here. Let's take a look at your distance settings. Do you want to include the suffix on your distance? And if so, what do you want that suffix to be? If I type in uh, feet here, we'll, we will apply that suffix to our distances. Directions, how do you want your directions to show up? Now, at this point, you can choose whatever directions you want for this legal description, independent of the survey or relying on the survey directions. As always, you can abbreviate degrees, minutes, seconds if you choose. You can include zeros if you want to or not. You can abbreviate north, south, east, and west, include extra bearing spaces. Let's go ahead and include zeros and, ex and extra bearing spaces. For the courses, what do we want? Do we want one course per line? Do we want to number the courses, uh, label the courses with what points they're from and to? And in the preview, do we want to include the phrase keys and bold the key, uh, phrase key values? Let's see what that looks like here real quick. I just want to show you how that works. If I go to with include phrase keys and bold phrase keys turned on with the color of blue, when I preview the report, I'm going to see these phrase keys that are uh, being used to generate uh, this legal description. Um, and you can see with bold phrase key values, the data that is being pulled in is bolded. If I turn that off and preview report, it changes it so that they are no longer bold. If I turn off include phrase keys and preview the report, I can see how that'll look. So I can make these changes and preview the report at any point. Here's the point numbers that that is from. So that's the labeled courses. We preview that report and it takes that out. In miscellaneous, 
We can include side shots, we can include point descriptions, we can include the user ending phrase. We can also use whatever traverse decimals are used in our traverse, or we can uh, specifically set our decimal places for this legal description. We can also include the area if we want to, and uh, we can override those units and put in whatever we choose to here. So we could say acres and square feet. And then once again, if we preview the report, we're going to see all of these things show up in this preview. So I can work on my template style and see how it's going to affect the legal description that I'm working on. Now the sequence phrases determine how a legal description uh, starts and stops. So I've got a header phrase that I can set up, and it's set up right now to say legal description colon with the parcel name, the traverse name, and the traverse description. So you can see in this preview over here, it says legal description, and then on the next line it says lot one. And there was no description added for this lot, so that's all it says. If I take out the carriage return, delete that, put a space in there, uh, go to the end of this, uh, put in another space like so, and preview that report. Now I can see that that's all on one line. So I can sit here and format this for whatever style I want. Here's my start line at point of commencement phrase, commencing at a point of commencement. So put in whatever wording you want, and then we're including the said point being phrase holder, the line direction, the distance. Okay, so there's our commencement, point of beginning, arc at point of commencement, all of these various phrases that you can come in and customize and whenever you choose to, whenever you make a change and you want to see how it affects it, you just simply hit preview report to see how that affects it. Here's the area, said parcel being square units or area more or less. And once again, Here's our square feet or 0.34 acres more or less. So you can, once again, customize these however you need them. So one of the things that you'll notice is that most of these will give you a picture of what we're talking about. And then it will show you besides giving you the place where you would type in or add various placeholders, um, you can see how that would affect an example phrase. All right, now this is not necessarily going to be a phrase in this legal description. It's, ba it's just an example phrase, like the picture is an example. When we get into the geometric phrases, these define the geometry pictured with each phrase. This is where you get to write it just the way you want. So if I have an arc that's tangent to a line, so I've got this curve going into an outgoing tangent bearing, this is how it's written. Thence, line direction, tangent to said curve, a distance of, and the line length. All right, so each one of these phrases, you'll get this little picture, new line direction. So I've, I'm coming one direction on a line, and then I take off in another direction. Thence, line direction, a distance of line length. What happens if we're going from an arc to a radial line? Thence, line direction, radial to said curve, a distance of etc., etc. So you can see how each one of these phrases are handled. New arc direction, small, large, cusps, 
compound arcs? How are you going to handle each of these situations? The nested phrases bring in side shots and point descriptions right into your legal description. So said point being a whatever that point was. Beginning of said curve being from description to a point being monument description. Being, this is reference direction, being line direction, a distance of, from, monument description, etc. Arc start direction, arc end, arc end direction. So we've got all of these different sequence phrases, geometric phrases, and nested phrases that you can set up. When you make changes to this, you can go back to your current template and you can either save as to a new template style or update your existing template style. So you're going to be able to go in and create multiple template styles for the various things that you need to work with. Now let's take a look at point of commencement. Let's back out of this and let's take a look at lot one. Now lot one is a simple closed loop. All right, it starts at its northwest corner and goes around. Now, what if we need to display the point of commencement somewhere else coming into this traverse? This can be done uh, in, in three different ways. You can, you can think of this as a chain of points from point of commencement to the true point of beginning. So let's say we've got a monument up here, and this is our point of commencement and we need to show the courses down to our point of beginning. The way this works, I right-click on anything being drawn by this Traverse, go to Traverse Tools, and choose Pick Legal Description Commencement Points. I then put my cursor over whatever I want to uh, use as my point of commencement. Now this can be anything associated with a point. It can be the line, it can be the point symbol, the point label. I'm on this line closer to the west end than the east end, so I'm going to get the point at the west end. I'll left click there, and it's given me that point. You can see that it's shown up with a blue highlight. Now I want this point, so I'm going to get on this line closer to the west end than the east end. I'll left click it, and it's got that point in there. Now I'm going to go to my actual point of beginning, so I'll click on this line there. Now I've got my full uh, uh, point of commencement chain from the point of commencement to the POB. So I'll right-click to end the tool, and Traverse PC shows me what points it's using for that point chain. I'll go ahead and say OK, and now if we go back and take a look at our legal description, <coughs> and preview this report, we now have a point of commencement and those courses down to the true point of beginning rather than starting at the point of beginning and going around. Now I said that there was were three ways that you can do this. That's one way that I can do this. The other two ways that I can do this, I can uh, start a traverse with them. So I could, in my uh, lot one traverse, I could have those points in this traverse and then go to my uh, closure view and tell Traverse PC, because I would have those points coming into this, Traverse PC would not automatically necessarily recognize it as a closed loop. So I could come in here, tell it it is a closed loop, and then tell it what points it goes from and to. And then Traverse PC would see those additional points at the start of this Traverse as the uh, commencement. So that's another way I can do it. I can also go into the Traverse Properties, and there's now a Commencement tab here. And I can manually type in my uh, point chain 
manually. So I could do 1, 2, 3. You see, you put a comma between the point numbers. So that's a quick uh, uh, presentation on how the new phrase-driven legal descriptions work. Let's go ahead now and take a look at Crow's Feet. I'm going to switch drawings for this. We're going to jump over to this lot four drawing, and we'll take a look at crow's feet. You can see that crow's feet are already turned on in this drawing. Um, let's zoom in a little bit here. So you can see our crow's feet at the northwest corner for our bearings and distances. All right. These crow's feet are being controlled by the Traverse Drawing settings. So if I go into the Traverse Drawing settings, you're going to see a new option here to turn on crow's feet for control points, curves and spirals, and for the side shots. So you can turn these on and off in your Traverse Drawing settings, just like everything else. So if I go ahead and turn off my crow's feet, go ahead and choose Apply, they go away. Turn them back on, apply, and there they are again. So it's just, just hopefully like you want them to go. Now if we go in, let's take a look at the crow's feet settings. So if I take a look at the settings, I can choose what kind of line I want and the line weight. I can add an arrow to it. Let's go ahead and do that. I can select the arrow size. I can set the color for my crow's feet independent of the traverse color. I can set the gap where they, uh, at the end of the crow's foot, relative to the point symbol, relative to the center or the edge. I can use either an angled crow's foot like I have here, it goes up and then just does an angle, or I can do a curved crow's foot. And then I can choose, if I'm putting the arrows on, which direction do I want the arrows to point? Do I want them to point away from the label, in other words, towards the point symbol, or do I want them to point toward the label? And then I can control the length of my crow's feet. Let's just go ahead and run this up to a half inch. And we'll see how this looks. I choose OK and apply this. And now I've got the curved crow's feet, half inch long, with arrows on the ends. And they're blue. So this is all controlled by the uh, settings here. Now if I want to, I can go with full length crow's feet. Now these, notice it changed that to zero. Now when I apply, these run all the way to the label, parallel to the lines, curves, spirals. Notice when I went to full length, it changes this to zero. When we specify a zero length, it indicates to Travers PC that we want a full length crow's foot. Let's go ahead and take this back down to half inch, choose OK, and apply that. And that's how my crow's feet show up. Once again, you will be storing these with your Traverse drawing settings. So that you're going to set these up the way you like them. Set them up one time and use them many times. Let's choose OK here and let's see how these react if I go and move this label. So I'm just moving this label out and it has move my crow's foot so it is pointing up to where I have dropped that label. All right, now let's see how crow's feet work if I withdraw an object. I don't typically do this, but let's say I came in and offset this line. Like I say, I don't typically do this. So I'm offsetting the line. I want to offset it uh, 15 feet uh, to the west. So 15, and then I'll click over here. And so now I've got this drawn line. Now I can right-click this line, go to Modify Objects, and I can label this line. So now I have this line labeled with its bearing and distance, just as if it were a traverse line. Notice it doesn't have any crow's feet. The crow's feet for this 
are controlled in your drawing settings. So there's a new tab in your drawing settings for crow's feet. Once again, these are the same settings we saw in the Traverse drawing settings. What kind of line? Do I want arrows on them? Uh, size. All of these things, once again, just like we had in our Traverse drawing settings. Let's, uh, and let's go ahead and set it up the same way. So we had blue and we had half inch. So I can set my Traverse drawing settings up for the way I like these crow's feet. I'll go ahead and choose OK. We still don't have crow's feet. What we do, I'm going to go ahead and select both of these labels. Select that one, select that one, end selection. And now I'm going to right click on either label and turn crow's feet on. So now I have the same type of crow's feet on this drawn line that I have uh, for my traverse. If I don't want the crow's feet, I can right click it, go back up, and turn crow's feet off. Just as you can, notice I just turned that one off because this one wasn't selected. Uh, so you can turn these on and off just as, the same way you can turn leaders on and off for individual labels. Okay, so let's take a look at multi-line curve labels when they're aligned. In the past, we've only been able to do single line when, when the curve labels are aligned. So you can see that this curve label, it's getting kind of crowded in there. So um, I want to take that to two lines. Now, I'm going to do this in the Traverse Drawing settings. I'm going to go to the Curves and Spirals tab. And I want to change my aligned label format. So I'm going to come in here, and I want to put uh, this on two lines with the bearing on a line all by itself. So I'm going to come in here, delete that space, put a backslash in. Notice that the backslash is the line break character. Choose OK and apply this. And there we go. So now I've got the bearing above the cord length and the arc length. You can do this however you choose. Now, because there's only one curve in here, rather than coming into my Traverse drawing settings, one of the things that I could do, let's say I wanted to split this to two lines. I can go into the properties of this object now, come in here and say, I want this to be on the second line. I'll simply take out that space, hit my Enter key, say OK, and now that's on two lines. So you can do this a couple of different ways. You can go in and change your Traverse format. Once again, if you uh, store your Traverse format the way you like it, you'll set it up once, use it a lot of times. All right, so that's multi-line uh, curve and spiral labels when they're aligned. Now, there's something else that's new. For those of you who are longtime users of Traverse PC, you're aware that the um, the way that things are drawn, when I've got multiple traverses tagged, the way that things are drawn is based on with what the sequence of traverses are in the uh, traverses manager. So based on that sequence, lot three would control its lines, lot four would control its lines other than any drawn by lot three, lot five would control its lines other than any drawn by lot four and lot three. Well, there are cases where you need to change that. Let's go back into uh, the Traverse drawing settings for lot four. And there is, on the advanced tab, there are some new options. I'm going to turn off, so this is unique settings for this drawing for control points. I'm turning that off and uh, the prioritize. Now, I'm going to go ahead and apply this, choose OK. And now you'll notice that this north line of lot four is no longer being drawn the way these lines are. So this line is now being drawn by lot three. Now, if I want to use lot three and lot five to show my adjoiners, 
I can use them in here with unique traverse settings so I can have them draw these dashed lines the way I want. And then what I can now do is I can go back into my traverse drawing settings for lot four and go to the advanced tab and I'm going to tell it that I want this traverse to use these settings for this drawing and I want to prioritize the everything on the control points. I want lot four to control the control points rather than having lot three draw this north line. So I'll go ahead and OK this. And now, once again, it, lot four is now controlling this rather than lot three. So now I've got lot three and lot five drawing these dashed lines. Now I simply want to clip this down to just show a portion of those adjoining lines. And the way I can do this, if you're not familiar with this, I could draw a rectangle around the area that I want to show. So I'm just going to start about here, draw a rectangle, and it doesn't matter what color it is. I'm just going to draw this rectangle in here. So now I've got this rectangle, and it is in survey space. Now I'm going to right-click this rectangle, and if you're not aware of this, I can go to Modify Objects. I'm sorry. I can just go right here. Clip survey space to this object. Traverse PC, if I want, asks if I want it to be invisible. I'm going to say yes. So now I'm clipping to that object. Now you do have to, in this case, this drawing was already set up, but you do have to go into the layers and tell Traverse PC which layers you want clipped. So right now, it's clipping the TPC lines. If I unclip that, you can see they show back up out there. So it's not clipping that layer. So you, I do have to tell it which layers I want to clip. If there were contours on here, I could be clipping the contours, etc., just based on the various layers. So speaking of contours, let's take a look at the next new feature in TPC Desktop 2018-R1, and that is surface exclusions. So in the past, when we have wanted to hide the contours running through a building, and any of you who've talked to me, we've discussed this. What we have done is we have gone into our traverse drawing settings for the building and we've filled it with some solid color. All right, I'm going to turn off my fill on this. And now we can see the contour line running through this building. So what we've wanted is a way to just not draw the contour lines running through the building. We now have that tool. I'm going to go into my surface settings, and I'm going to turn on our tin lines. I want to see our tin lines, any break lines, and apply that. So now I can see all of the tin lines, the break lines, all of this. So we now have an option called exclusions within our surfaces. So we can tell Traverse PC to exclude various triangles from being drawn. And there are a couple of ways to do this. One way, I can right-click anything being drawn by a surface, go into Surface Tools, and go to Exclusions, and then I have an option to edit the exclusions. Traverse PC asks if I want it to recompute as I go. I'm going to say yes. Now, the status bar is going to tell me what it's looking for. Left click inside any triangle to show or hide it. Well, let's get rid of this triangle. So I'm just going to left click inside that triangle. Notice that contour line disappeared there. Let's get rid of that one. And if I went to half foot contours, I might have another line over here. So let's get rid of that 
area. So now I have excluded those triangles. Now you'll notice that those triangles go outside the, this area. So you would want to set up your tin uh, or etc. so that you do have topo points at the corners of your building. Otherwise, it's not going to work because possibly if, if I had my shots way outside the corners, I'm excluding then contours that are outside of the building area, as you can see there. All right. So you are going to want to um, have topo shots at least close to the corners of your building to use this exclusion tool. Now that's one way that I can do this. Um, let's go ahead and turn these back on. All right, so now I've just clicked in those areas, they're back on. I'm gonna right click to end that tool. Let's go back into our surface settings. Let's look at the new exclusions tab. This will list any exclusions that we have in it. And then we can apply these exclusions to the contours, to volume, slope analysis. It, we can apply them to whatever portions of this we want. If we want to subtract that from the overall area, we can do that. We also have buttons to remove all exclusions, or I can individually remove selected exclusions. But I can also use traverses to get my exclusions. So select the traverses you want in the traverses manager. So I'll come over here and where is my trailer cover? Right here, I'll select my trailer cover, come back over here to the traverse options and say get, and I've now imported those same three exclusions. Those are those three triangles that I clicked in. And I go ahead and apply and you can see that I've, I've got those um, same exclusions. So you can do this by traverse as well as manually. Now one thing to be aware of is that when you go in and um, do exclusions, one of the things that does is that then locks the surface. All right, exclusions are the very last thing you would be doing to this surface is doing these exclusions because once you're excluding various triangles, you're no longer able to edit those triangles and we lock the surface automatically. Now these exclusions also affect the polyface mesh. So one of the things that we can do, now you know that we automatically apply um, layer names. If we were to export this, uh, we would be exporting a TPC minor contours layer, all of this stuff. So I'm going to override my layers, with, my layer names with a prefix of EG. So these are our normal layer names. I'm going to go ahead and say OK. Now when we go into our layers, my contour layers have now been renamed from TPC contour to EG for existing ground, major, minor, and tin. All right. Now if I export to CAD, I will get EG polyface mesh layers in my uh, export to CAD. Let's just go ahead, go ahead and take a look at this. So I want to export this to CAD. I'll go to Tools, Export Drawing As, and now there is another new option here. We now have uh, AutoCAD 2018 support. All right, so if I go ahead and export this, uh, to CAD, and I want to turn that off. Export this to CAD. If we then take a look at this in our CAD program, whether it's uh, uh, in a, an external CAD program or in a TPC's CAD view, 
and zoom in here, notice that our exclusions are supported in the polyface mesh of this. And if we take a look at our layers, we have the EG major, minor, polyface mesh, and tin layers. The polyface mesh is turned off by default, you know, so you could turn it on. Uh, they will, when I send this out to that architect or engineer, they are going to have this polyface mesh and they will, will be able to work with these, um, with the surface. So that's it for uh, what's new in TPC Desktop 2018 R1? I think you'll agree with me. There's some pretty cool stuff in here. And we hope you enjoy this new release. Thank you for joining me today.